Let's welcome on stage Dr. Moore and the robot. And of course, she'll be joined in conversation by my lovely colleague, Vedika Sood. Welcome to India, Dr. Merritt Moore, and welcome to the NDTV World Summit. Thank you so much. It's such an honor to be here. Are you all set? I'm all set. All right. So let's just get the first question out of the way. And that question on everyone's mind out here is quantum physics and professional ballet. How did the two worlds meet in your world? Well, confession is I always try to just do one. I've been trying to retire from ballet for about you cannot nearly retire. 20 years. I can't <laughs> retire. It's my, it's my oxygen. And so, and I found that when I stopped dancing, my grades would go down. And I realized that actually, as humans, it should be possible to hope and dream and to actually actively explore the technology and the artistic side of our brains. You know, Dr. Moore, it'll be a bit rude if we don't introduce the third, or rather the only robot on stage right now. Does the robot have a name? Today, the name is Botany Spears. We're open to other suggestions. And what are the other names you've had for this robot? Oh, Botany Spears, some days it's Fred AI Stare, uh -huh. Botman Robin, we've got Robot De Niro, we, we've got a couple. So does it face an identity crisis of any sort on a particular day? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about that. You've coded this robot. Yes. Are there days when the robot just doesn't want to listen to you? Oh goodness, last night. It really, really did not want to listen to me. Yeah. We don't want our viewers to know about that. We'll talk about that backstage. But it's now behaving. It's All now, right. it's decided. It was like, it had stage fright. So it, it's that partner that you always have to have around and keep happy in so many ways that mm. when you have performances as big as this, it just behaves. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But tell us more about the inspiration. Like I said, these are two different worlds, you know, coming together. How did you get inspired, Dr. Moore? Well, after my PhD, I was dancing, but then there was this pandemic, you guys might have heard of, and then I couldn't dance with humans, and dance is a form of communication, and we need other humans to, to express ourselves. And because I didn't have that in isolation, I thought, well, robots don't get COVID, maybe I'll start programming a robot. And I would just, from 7 a.m. till midnight, stay in a deserted theater all day long, just programming the robot. And it became this bizarre companion. I mean, bizarre in the concept of it, but it was my companion from 7 a.m. to midnight throughout the pandemic. It definitely hung out with me more than any human. And now it's grown and it's so special to share this because some of my most personal and vulnerable performances are with the robot because I get to explore my own memories and I get to have conversations with people who may have passed away. Mm -hmm. They would be very hard to explore that with another human because I see you, I feel you, I'm dancing with you. It's hard to explore my own personal memories, but with the robot, I can go there. And so that's why it's so special to share this with all of you. That's great. Now. You know, it's two different disciplines we're talking about, and it needs so much of focus. Has there been a time when you wanted to give one up for the other? Oh, yes. So <laughs> many times. And particularly, yes, a, a lot of times. And I just realized life, uh, my joy, I lose joy. If I just focus on dance, I miss that, that active aspect of my brain thinking about quantum physics or robots and I need that to really thrive in the dance studio and same when I'm just thinking about physics I need that outlet of dance in order to help me be more creative in the physics lab. And what does it teach you about focus, the discipline of it all, focus, perseverance, the coming together like I said of two different worlds, it needs so much discipline, what has it taught you over the years? It's taught me that this small whisper of a question, why not, is actually now even more powerful and strong in my brain. So in the beginning, I was told I could, had to choose. And there was a little question that was like, but why not? And, and by whom? Hmm? That you had to choose. Yeah, that I had to choose. And now it's louder. It's like, why not? Like, why, why can't we do both? 